your life. You can all stand up to this point. <laughs> Jesus is not a Tell them of Jesus, the mountain is Bring us to the first Father, the Lord, Jesus is merciful, Jesus is merciful. The Lord is the man leaving down to receive. Where were the honest people with a chair? He will forgive if they are only me. Friends, in the sheep, and what I can say, Jesus is not a fool, Jesus. Down in the hill, my God, crushed by the hill, here is my God, come with soul. Father, what in heaven, we thank you for this uh, the time that you are calling us that we may consecrate ourselves. We may know your way and your will. Lord, we pray that you may be with us and guide us through this last for this humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We are so much thankful to God for giving us this chance and this time that we may come back and study together this serious topic that determines our life, both in this world and in the world in the world to come. And it is a topic that should make us to be so humble in the presence of the Lord. Because it's a tool in the, in the hand of the devil to make us not to see heaven. The subject of gossip and marriage. <clears throat> we have been tackling some of the steps that we need to follow. And that every young man and young woman need to consider before making this uh, step into getting into marriage. Because many people think it is a, a bliss, it is a place where there are no trials, it is a feel good kind of uh, institution. Yet it is an institution that is full of 
testing and proving that God wants us to go through that we may reflect the lovely image of Jesus Christ. And that is why we are very cautious when we are doing going through it to make sure that we are in the right class. We are not entering into this for fun. It's never for fun. Never for fun. To get far. No, never. It is to make sure that the work of God is glorified. And the name of God is vindicated. And to produce a people who will stand true to God during the time of investigative judgment. Mm -hmm. When we read that quote that says, to make us stand true during the time of investigative judgment, and we have those institutions, one of the schools there, one of the institutions there is school. And we are told that marriage is a school that we will never do what? Graduate from. Graduate from. So if you have that mindset, mindset that it is a school where God is teaching us patience, forbearance, forgiving one another, loving kindness, humbleness of mind, and letting the word of God dwell in our hearts. How much more will we be dealing with the earthly, worldly methods? We will never even look at it. It should give us comfort. It should give us really the picture of what God wants. We are told that it is it depicts the unity between the father and the son. The marriage relationship depicts the unity between Christ and his father. And so that is what we want to learn here. How can we achieve that unity? We must know and learn to hear the still small voice of God. And we have also the voice of the devil. We must be able to distinct who is calling us into this institution. Is it my own idea or it is God? You know, the Bible says that strive ye to enter through the small what? Through the straight gate, not small gate, straight gate. For many there be that want to do what? To enter it, but they shall not enter. So we must try to enter the straight gate. It is not for everyone. It is for those who are willing to follow the plan of God. It is straight. It is a straight path. For those who are contemplating marriages here. Or those who pass through that and already are having a family must make sure that their children are educated from the very first time they are con uh, the conception takes place to the time that they will be big enough. So who can remind us some of the seven steps that make us to step into the divine plan of God for those who have been here? Step number one is? Uh, the seven steps. The first one is, is for us to identify whether it is God will and time for us to get married. Yes. Then number two is we shall ask ourselves whether we are ready and prepared to get married. Mm. Then step number three is, is for us to ask ourselves who is to be our companion that the Lord God desires. Then step number four is for us to get counsel. Mm -hmm. Then step number five is for us to go for courtship. Mm -hmm. Then step, step number six, six is engagement. Then yes. once we married. Yeah, wedding day and then get into a holy matrimony. And then there were some principles that need to be practiced throughout all those steps. There should be modesty. What? Modesty. Modesty. Do you understand what modesty means? Do you understand what modesty means? The way you carry out yourself, the way you do things, it can be the way you talk, it can be the way you dress, it will be the way you eat, 
It will be the way you respond. And then we have simplicity. It must be carried out in the simplicity. A simplicity there do not, does not mean simplicity. Simplicity there means mm -hmm. you are humbly wanting to follow the plan of God in the way it is described in the word of God. It is not for those who want to be, to make it like a scenery. No, 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 no. And then we have sincerity. It must be carried out into by sincerity. You don't enter, get someone, attack the affection, and hearing you want to play around. You have not made your mind that this is the person that God wants you to. You are still weighing around. I told us there is no trial and error. There is no what? Yes, trial and error. Let me see if this will work. Let me see if this will work. And you've been tapping into affection. To me, what I believe the Bible says is that there is that special way. It is upon you to wait upon it and listen to the providential workings of God. Just like Isaac, the marriage of Isaac is a sure uh, example of what God means to enter into a marriage relationship. Was there a special one, a specific one that God had prepared? And we are told that in the home of Abraham, he had studied his son and he knew what his son needed. Not yoking himself with an unbeliever. And do you know what an unbeliever means? Not someone who's doing and practicing and living and thinking the way you think. Not all of us here. We can be present truth believers, but still there are some unbelievers. I mean, it's true or false. You want to practice true education, health message, simplicity in dress, but someone is thinking otherwise. Yet you profess to be, to believe, to be present to believers. So there can be unbelievers, even a minute they profess people of God. These are a believer is someone who are completely in sync based on the third angel's message. So Abraham tell Eliezer, go and do what? And get me a, a wife for my son in the land of my fathers, in the presence of the brethren who believe the same and practice the same truth that you practice. Never think of it. You can get a born again outside there, behaving the way you want and, and you think that is I tell you, you are on the wrong truth. It must be a present truth word to live. And you know, there can be a born again outside there who behaves better than a present truth lady you see here, or even a gentleman, true or false. And you can be tempted. God said, do not you're unequally yoke with unbeliever. We want to be sure, and this is why we take those first four stages precautiously, prayerfully, studyingly, with a lot of piety and reverence to make sure that we don't mess up in our life. We are told that if we make an attempt to go away from this plan, then marriage will be a guiding yoke. It will be a yoke that is difficult to break. Because once the covenants have been made, then there is no breaking of the covenant. Are we together? Marriage is a covenant. If God makes a covenant with us, then we need to follow that covenant. There are three covenants between the believers, a body of God. It's a covenant. And we learn this into detail when we get to the marriage when it is already sealed. And there is a covenant between the believer and Christ or in God. And the last covenant is between a man and a woman. Should never be broken. That was the will of God. Because God made it, made it for uh, to demonstrate the character, the unity that the Father and the Son has. 
If you go out of that, it means that even if we are believing in the one true God, we don't really know what it really means in our marriages or in our relationships. And I also say that the first four stages, am I, uh, is God calling me? Am I ready? And this is the person for you before getting, and, and you have gotten counsel in all those steps, beginning with the word of God and your godly parents and your guardians and the church. Then you get into courtship and marriage. We want to make sure that everything is sure. Your counselors, your parents must be sure that now you can carry on the courtship stage with a surety. I'm not dipping my hand, my leg, the other side, and I'm ready to lift it up. You'll find even statements in the spirit of prophecy that says, better to break our engagement than to get into a marriage with, without their surety and doubt. That is true. But do you know the divine plan will of God? He wanted once you make a decision. And it is the plan of God. It should be like that. Now, as we continue, we, we looked at, uh, the last one was getting cancer. And each and every one of us must make cancer. During those first stages, and even up to the portion we're going to study today, there is no that affection, that love and impulse and emotions that we find in the marriage. A married man. Really. This time, you are not going to tap the attention or the, the mind of someone before you are sure that this is the one I'm going with. Are we together? Yeah. So that is why we are moving very cautiously because sometimes the devil may trick you and you want to break our engagement. If you began in the first stage with the exchanges and words and, 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 and those actions that shows that you're really in marriage, you're going to break someone's are we together? Even if someone, you will find it is it cannot work out and God is telling him, telling me impressively in my mind that if this thing is not going to work out when you separate you separate as a brother and sister in the faith. No one is saying, oh that person messed up with and you begin holding bitterness and grudges that is going to take us into grief. We don't want such things. That is why we move very cautiously. Not showing love and affection and intimacy in the early stages. Until God, until the day that we come together and we are prayed for by the church. This will really help us. Now, if you have determined that it is God's will to be married, You've determined that you are ready and prepared. And for a young man, you have an how. Are we together? Not your brother's house or your mother's house or your father's house or still renting or living with your sister or your, 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 your cousin. Have your own work. Do you remember how God told the children of Israel that number one, Buy ye land, build a house, and get what? Get a one. You must have a, you must have a house of your own or be ready. Even if it's renting, you can afford. That is why in the preparation, there is part of the, the man must be ready to take care of himself. He must have something to do. You should have your own house. Never marry someone and you take her to your, you're still living with your mother. You're not really. Have your what? House. That is the Bible principle. Your own house. And you have things that can make people live in that house. And then continue with the process. Now, if you've counseled with God, the parents and godly advisor, and together, you have come to the conclusion that God is calling you to be married. And then you can now continue into courtship in marriage. Into the courtship stage. 
this should be step number five. So I guess I never even remember to change it. it. Should be step number five, courtship. And what is it? It is the serious effort of two people to find out whether it is workings of God in your life, listening to what the Spirit tells you, listening to what your guardians tells you, and you are you, you are approaching this with a, your eyes what away. We are told that sometimes people are blinded. They say that love are blinded. Love should not buy, uh, blind you. Love should not what blind you. It should make you to be more awake and always wanting not to walk away from the path of God, but you want the true path. Those characteristics in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 about love have to be manifested during worship. There is no lie. There is no truth. There is kindness. There is humility. No one is trying to trick the other. No one is trying to trick the other. That's why during the counseling uh, time, sometimes a guardian or your parent or even the church elders can help you to get out, to get someone who can make you bring glory to God. And if that happens, the way it happens with Abraham and the, and the elderly, uh, elderly servants, be it, if it, is, if it impresses your mind, you are not to be forced with what you don't want. And you have already looked into the word of God and you find that all things in, all the figures are there before filling them, then you can move on. So now just looking back before we continue with this, you know how Abraham, Eliezer knew the right person that God wanted for her, for, for Isaac? Go to the book of Genesis chapter 24. Book of Genesis chapter 24. And I want to look at some something in a while and then we come back here. Now in Genesis chapter 24, verses 1 says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his elder servant of his core, his house, that rule over all that he had, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I do. So the, your counselor must make sure that this is not an unbeliever and they know what uh, unbeliever means. Because you want to enter into a stage that is so serious and so important for us. And then if you go down to verses number 10, and the servant took 10 camels of the camels of his master and departed. For all the goods of his master were in his hand, and he arose and went to Mesopotamia and to the city of Now. So he took with him all the good, even the dowry that they were going to pay. And then you see the story continues. If you are going to study how many a camel, a camel can bring how many liters? 20 to 60, right? And you see it's also, yeah? About no no no. Not 20 to 60, about 40 to 60 liters of water, one camel. And you know, they were not only, it was not only one camel, not only one camel. And she fetched water for all of them. And not only that, she welcomed Eliezer to their father. You know, when when, when she was asked, do you know, uh, where do you come from? And she said, I come from um, uh, what was the father of Rebecca? Yeah, that father 
And he, know, he knew that, oh, this is the will of God. He never hastened to tell them, let us go. Show me your father's home. Are we together? And he had to go and ask permission for the, from the father and the brothers. That tells you, you don't just begin living with someone without the parents knowing. And he was testing the hospitality. Do you know why? In the home of Abraham, how many people were living there? More than a thousand. Do you think a woman who cannot be able to cook for a thousand people or even manage them to, was able to manage that? So those are principles, some characters that are looked into. You don't want to get a wife or a companion who is very busy, who is very uh, hungry, easily hungry, and here you are a minister, you want your friends to come visit at home, and she's there in the corner, not even speaking to anyone, not even willing to go and cook. Here you have friends. Are we together? A minister should get a wife who is courteous, who is kind, cheerful and ready and determined and hospitable to people. Because you will have friends. Or someone, the visitors come and she doesn't even want to greet. Or she greets them and she's busy. Just say, how are you? Welcome. And she goes, not even asking, can I give you water? Can I give you, do you want to bathe? A visitor just come. Then you know, that is a terrible one. And you know this during the courtship during the choosing how they behave with people. And you have to be very careful also of a lady who is taking attention when you are in a camp meeting like this and she wants to be more cutters to you than other brethren. When people are serving food, she always wants, after giving you the food, she doesn't care of others. She goes her away. That we know that is a dangerous woman. Who do not care for other brethren. If she brings food to you only, then you know this one will be a very difficult one in mind. She will not take care of my brethren when they come to visit me. Are you listening, my brothers and sisters? Yeah. One who treats people the same. That kindness should be shown on how they behave and they handle some other people. So he looks at hospitality, determination, and kindness and humility. That is what we want. Courtesy is very important. Now, Christian courtship is a sincere effort on the part of two people, two young people who under proper counsel before and during courtship are seeking to find out the will of God concerning their union. We are just seeking the will of God. Is it God's will? You pray about it every day. God, these are the evidences. These are the impressions that you are making that it is God's will. The driving force behind courtship should be to please the Lord. That should be the driving force. Is to please the Lord. You have to try the Lord. If it is his God, if it is God's will, if it is your will. And when you are doing the, those signs, and because signs are not a way of determining, because the devil can play tricky with you. Are we together? You don't hang on one sign or so. You must be wide awake on the principles and the way of God. And what is the word of God say? And not only once, you can try it today. Next month, yeah, those are the times. It is not just one and you are satisfied. You have to try God. You try the Lord to see. Do you think Gideon tried the Lord how many times? Many times to prove God. If it is your will, let there be uh, some moisture in this thing I'm putting here. Lord, if it is your will, let it dry. And the Lord shows it. So they are waiting with God continue to farm your plan. So that you can be beyond reasonable doubt that this is the Lord leading me. So the driving force should be to please the Lord. 
if the Lord come at a specific time, you are uh, some time you are with that lady, it be the Lord pleased. And even this continues even in marriages, even in homes. Are we together? Even those who are married in your bedroom, if if the Lord comes at a specific time, are you doing things that are pleasing the Lord or the angels will say? Do you have the wildly modes even in our inner secret places where we are living with our wives and husbands? And this I'll speak very seriously after I've covered the subject of marriage. That makes us weigh us down and make the blessing of the Lord not to be in our life. Because the worldly mode has mold or pers pers our perception and, and ideas have really come into our mind that we may we find it very hard to distinct to distinguish what is good and what is right. So never forget every step towards a marriage alliance is to be characterized by modesty. Simplicity, sincerity, and honest purpose to please the Lord. I will repeat this over and over again. Will God be pleased in my steps? Is the question. No man that warreth and tangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. For even Christ did what? Please not himself. If even Christ did not please himself when he was here below, whom do you think you can please yourself? That's why I was saying it is not for fun. It is not to get funny or mischievous or to find some utopia, utop, uh, utopian type of environment. It is to please the world, the Lord, because it is an institution that God had in mind and he knew the purpose of it, to bring unity. There was this unity in heaven between it. Satan and his angels, Christ and his angels. And so God was creating man to bring that unity back together. Romans 15, 3. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. We are not to please ourselves in this endeavor. There is no subject in which we betray, reveal what our motive is more than in this question of courtship and marriage. If we are seeking to please ourselves, it will certainly show up. If we are seeking to please the Lord, it will show up. Sometimes it show up when already we have made the covenant. Sometimes it show up when we are still in the early stages. Whether it is going to please the Lord or not. Whether the principles of health, the principles of, of how we carry out our words, are always demonstrated. Now this comes to me. During the courtship stage, we are finding the will of God. Sometimes the character that is demonstrated will show you what you expect in your mind. If she likes speaking late, very late in the night, or you like just speaking long calls late in the night, know that there will be some unfaithfulness once you get into that mind. We are following all the lesson before after nine should not be communication so that you will, ex you will practice this even in your mind. Are we together? Speaking idle words. If someone just speak idle words, oh, I will beat you jokingly. Don't play with me. You know that when you get into marriage, it will do what? Or someone, I'll beat you, you are jokingly. It may be unconscious in your mind, but when you get into marriage, I'll beat you, will come out. The reality. I will not listen about to you about that. You know that? That is what will happen. So you have to be very careful. Most of these words, if you know the specific word, that will be grown, please be very careful. So always be trying to find out what best pleases the Lord. Ephesians 5.10, is my way acceptable unto the Lord? Is it acceptable unto the Lord? 
in dress. We are looking at things during the courtship. We are honestly studying the character of this person. In dress, is it modest? In diet, what is the lady eating? In the life work, what are the duties, activities, the occupation that this lady desires to do or this man wants to do? Music, what kinds of music does she love? If it is this uh, music, the worldly music, the Christian contemporary music, you know Christian contemporary music? The ones with the drums and the voodoo in it. You know that even the feelings and the emotions that are aroused by it, is not for you. Money. How is she managing the money that she has? We, my brother was telling, telling us here, you try them with the money. What do they do? What do they buy most? What do, what do they buy? Even for their parents, you can test that even for their parents. And you will know how they will operate or buy, use your money in marriage. These are serious things that you are discussing before you get into an engagement. Recreation. What does this lady love or this man love? Is it watching football or moving movies? Or what kinds of book does she read or he reads? It tells you what is what will be in your marriage. These are things you sort out before coming together and kneeling down and getting a prayer from the people. In the education, what kind of education does she want to pursue? Does she want to pursue? Because these things will bear heavily in the marriage life. Do you want to have, do we want to educate our children a uh, true education way? And this will be shown by the desire and, and the way, the interest someone has. Are we together? Yeah, it will be shown. It, it is determined before the people stay. Time. Where do we, how so are we planning to save? And if the person is saving at that, what does she use or he use his money for mostly? And you discuss things like, how will we do our true education? Which books will we use? Where will we do it? Are you ready for acting the part of a teacher? If it is finances, what will we do with our money? What things are to be bought, things not to be bought? These are things you discuss. If it is about children, how many children? Would you want us to have? If it is about family life, uh, family planning, how will the family plan be done? These are things you discuss. You don't begin when you're ready to go. Are you getting the young man? Yeah. If it is all of us are going to work for God, how will we work for God? I am calling this line. Another person is calling this line. How will we manage this together to make the work of God a blessing in our lives? We want to determine those during the courtship in mind. So that when we are getting into it, we know what we are going to do. It is not beginning to know what we are going to do. Because that is going to bring a lot of differences and a breakage for the family. If it is about self-support work, what are you going to do? What are we going to do to support ourselves? What skill do we have? What skill do you have? You don't determine this when you're ready there. Because someone will say, I want to go do certain type of business. I see the, 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 the saloon thing is doing well. That is what I want to do. You're already in marriage. And she's so firm on it. What do you do? This thing you need to be determined before. And as you pray about it, that is when you will know the will of God. Because 
our unity is about making sure that the Lord is blessing everything. Marriage is something that will influence and affect your life both in this world and in the world to come. A sincere Christian will not advance his plans in this direction without the knowledge that God approved. That the Lord approved his course. So you must know that it is influencing your life here and in the world to come. Either you are preparing for perfection or for imperfection. We want our characters to be refined. That is why we are told iron sharpen what? Iron. You just want the iron that is going to sharpen you for heaven. Are we together? Yeah, so we must have the right iron that will sharpen me for heaven. Lord, when it is time for devotion, the person is still asleep. Yet specific time for devotion should be kept. Morning and evening devotion must be kept. We, don't, we want people who are driven with, uh, driven from within, not forced, not for us to do some things. If you know, morning devotion, it is for my benefit. It is not for my husband's benefit or my wife. If you force someone, you know that that person is going to derange you and more so your children. More so the children. So we have to be very careful. If it is time for eating, we know that everyone must come to the table so that we can eat together. Not someone wanting his own way, unless otherwise there is some uh, some genuine reason to do that. The family must be together. These are things you discuss, and you pledge, and you put yourself before God that Lord help us to do this. You don't begin them when you're already married. You will be trampling on someone's foot over and over again, and the person will say, "This is a guy in your." What is the time for me? Are you irregularity? You know, we are, we want to make sure that everyone is, is helping that goal. So question, can a sincere Christian know whether or not God approved his or a cause in these matters? A sincere Christian will know. Because the Lord says in Psalms chapter 25, I think verses 14, that surely the Lord God will do nothing but to reveal it unto his what? Suffers of prophets can be prophetically, or even those who desire to know what God is saying about something. He will not make you have go into a step that will not work. Whom do you want to choose for you? He will not want to choose for himself, but will feel that God must choose for him. So I don't want to choose for myself, but I feel in my mind that God should choose for me. That should reign in my mind over and over again. We are not to please ourselves for Christ, please not himself. Is the great business in marriage to find the person that will please me? Yes. So it says, God has made me in a certain way. If he intends for me to be married, he has made a companion just as he made him for Adam. And that person which will be the one that will please him the best. So God is choosing not someone who is going to please him. I you getting the, the principle there? Don't see it that, oh, this is going to, no, no, no. God chooses someone who is going to please him so that she can or he can see. It goes that way. Not pleasing you, and then what? And that is what he did for Hada. He will not want to choose for himself, but will feel that God must choose for him. We are not to please ourselves for Christ, please not himself. But again, I will not be understood to mean that anyone is to marry one whom he does not love. This should be seen. Don't marry someone whom you cannot love. Don't marry someone whom you cannot submit unto. You want to make a decision, someone whom you're going to love. Do you know 
when Eliezer quit uh, Rebekah for Isaac, Isaac says that, the Bible says that, and they are with Rebekah, and his heart was done what? Comforted. Was comforted. Because of the death of the mother. Yeah, because of the death of the mother. The kindness, the hospitality that the mother used to show. He was comforted that this will be the position that my mother was in. No wonder sometimes you are told that your mother can determine someone for you. Are you together? Are we together? Mm -hmm. If your mother approves, then no. Some of these women know. Well, so if they are godly women, just tell you, my brother, my son, this is not going to. This. You know, there are some people who can be just with some people within a few minutes, they have already known who this kind of person is. The way they talk, they carry out themselves. The mother of Isaac was comforted. If your mother tells you, no, this one I don't think have a, have a good character. If she's a good lady, man. How we together? Someone you're going to love. Someone who looks, let me use this word, handsome or beautiful to you. You're someone that, oh, I made a mistake. These days is when I'm seeing the most handsome men in the area. I wish I knew. Not that. Oh, these days when I'm meeting beautiful ladies around, I think I made a mistake. Marry someone who is fair to you. Was Rebecca fair to Isaac? Yes, the Bible says so, that the woman was fair and beautiful, fair to look into. And to. That is the one you want. The Lord leading you into that, not by your own analysis because when that prophet went to choose a king that God wanted and Samuel uh, uh, Samuel uh, wanted a king was it Samuel who no Nathan was it that went to Jesse and the sons were coming some were tall some were very gigantic but he said no 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 that is not the one I want God said so David was too. So we don't go with the looks. We go with the character. We go with what? Character. Character. Hospitality. The fruits of the power of the Holy Spirit. Those are what we are looking unto. Marry someone who will be attractive to you until you die. Are we together? Not beginning to change. I wish I knew. And that is what happens today. People go with the, the looks and that attractiveness is in the character inside out, not outside in. Are you getting the principle? Yeah, that is what you want. Someone you love. Someone you can spend time with, talking to. Someone whom you can share the burdens of life and the force of God with. Or someone you get... Uh, you get a shame to be with when you are in the congregation. You see, people are married, but they feel ashamed to be with their wives or their husband to walk with them. We don't want that. In the plan of God, that unity is manifested everywhere we go. If God is leading two people together and they go at it in a proper, dignified, matter of fact way, consciously to find out the will of God when the time comes for love, the Lord will take care of that. They won't be, there won't be any problem about that at all. If it is in a dignified way, in a way that the Lord approves, then I tell you, when it comes for the time, the right time, remember there's a time to love and a time not to love. But what should be allowed? To marry one woman he does not love, this will be sin. But fancy 
and the emotional nature must not be allowed to lead on to real. If you have, you practice the sex before marriage, before you people being united together, know that in marriage, there will be unfaithfulness. You are creating a new way. It may not happen. Well, some God, God can be merciful to someone for that mistake. But I tell you, we are guarding everything. We are making sure that we are walking in that plan. The curtain in the sanctuary, there are no holes. Are we together? There are no holes. Premarital sex before, even if you are courting, it is going to lead into some loopholes. Some loopholes in the near future. And that burden, that baggage can be carried out with you throughout your life. You must be very cautious and very careful. God requires the whole heart, the supreme affections. So we are not following the worldly model where we put the cup before the heart. That those principles that need to follow first or the things that will end are the ones that are in front that we follow. No, no, no. The feelings, emotion, and impulse should not lead us. We are to control them. Are we together? Yeah. There can be temptations. That is why we are looking into where, where, where are we going to meet? And in which place? At what time? This is still in courtship and marriage. You know, this is the one that the Lord is leading me. But ants off, are we together? Ants off. So the time is God's plan. In God's plan for love and the expression of love is when the matters of practical judgment and counsel have been better settled. And now you say we can now go for engagement. We can now get our, our uh, we can now be united together. During this courtship and marriage, you can be planning on how you're going to, to have the wedding. The parents know every move. The counselors know every move. The church no, and when I think about the church, it means the elderly, the elders in the church, no. So feelings and emotional and impulses must be controlled during this period. You don't just take emulously. Can I control my affection? Boys and girls enter upon the marriage relation with unripe love, immature judgment without noble elevated feeling, and take upon themselves the marriage vows only led by their boyish, girlish passions. You know, sometimes we feel, and we should feel very, very sad for those who are being married or are being united today. Because you just see someone and you see, ah, this one is just led with feelings. They don't understand really what they are going to enter into. Sometimes you feel like, Crying for them. They want things to be very flowery. Flowery. I'm not saying flowers are bad. And what I'm trying to say is that what do these people understand what they are going to engage into? People spend lots of money for something that is not going to last and glorify God. Spending a lot of money and planning many, many other things. Elevated feelings. We must have them that which the, the higher power can be able to control the baser power. Self control. If self control is manifested during the courtship and marriage, you know that you are going to survive in that marriage. Are we together? I will speak about that in some classes to come. Self control. Important. Very, very important. It should be demonstrated during the, the courtship in marriage. Are you controlling yourself? 
those feelings and thoughts and emotions? Are you controlling them during the, the courtship and marriage? Or you are carried up with these feelings, emotions, that you find yourself speaking things that you ought not to speak. Let feelings and impulses not lead you. Because if they lead you now, they will lead you then, and you shall mess up, and that marriage may be, or it can be a burden that is difficult to carry. If there is any subject that should be considered with calm, reason, and passion, judgment, it is the subject of marriage. If ever the Bible is needed as a counselor, it is before taking a step that binds persons together for life. You want the Bible to lead you. You want the counsel in the spirit of prophecy to lead you. All that can be said by men and women of experience proves ineffectual. It is powerless to change the decision to which their desires have led them. It's the young youth. But advice is the only thrown, uh, only thrown away on those who are determined to have their own way. Passion carries such individuals over every barrier that reason and judgment can't interpose. So the counselor should be with their eyes open because we are helping these people to be good members of the church. Good members who are self control those who are not soon angry, those who are grave, hospitable, kind. We want to see that those counselors should be directing these young men and women into that. Keep on I saw something in the person you have in mind, which I feel is not good. Don't please these young men. Tell them the truth. Are we together? Don't hide anything. Tell them the, the truth. To me, I see these things going to in the marriage in the future. You may talk to that person. If he can change, well, anyway, change needs to be given time to prove that that person has really changed. The hand on way in which courtship and marriages are carried on is the cause of a great amount of misery. The full extent of which is known only to God. On this rock, thousands have made shipwreck of their souls, professed Christians whose lives are marked with integrity and who seem sensible upon every other subject make fearful mistakes here. So it is the, in the courtship state when people really make fearful and detrimental uh, things that make, will injure their marriages. Underhand, this underarm method, secrecy, That's why there should be no many meetings in secret places during this courtship of marriage. They need to be avoided. And this also, we find that why courtship should not be carried for a long time. Are we together? The spirit of prophecy say not more than two years, but narrows down to six months. It should not go for a long time. Do you know why? There will be familiarity. That brings what? Content. Because during this stage, I've just read about emotions and feelings. They can carry out far as far to an extent that we will mess up before the Lord steal up the things before the people, before the church. It should be not carried for a long time. That is why it is better carried when Everyone is prepared. Are you seeing this? Why the, 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 the preliminary steps are very important? When you are prepared, you know what you are getting into. And so when you move into the next stage of courtship and marriage, everything should be ironed out very fast and with the Lord leading into everything, and then you go into marriage. Because these feelings and emotions make people to mess up. We are told that we need not to be uh, we need not to be blind in these matters. We must be looking unto them very, very effectively. So you should watch again the missing religious meeting in order to engage in courtship. Some people will miss prayer, prayer meeting. 
in order to meet the so-called loved one. Or even miss doing some duties that are very important in the house in order to meet their loved ones, the so-called loved ones. You don't want such a kind of person. You want people who are self-controlled, who are principled, and they are moving cautiously. They know what is important first. For instance, I was in a prayer meeting, that lady you were dating or quoting, say, I am in a prayer meeting. I'll call you later when I'm here. You know, prayer is going on. And after one hour or even 30 minutes, are you done? After 45 minutes, a call comes, you know, that is a downward method, a downward way that that person is not a noble. He doesn't understand what it means when someone is going to pray. You get 10 missed calls. 10 what? This is carried out with the mission. If you are calling me now, now I'm in, I'm in a club. And I have very, many sick people here. But you get someone who is very, very controlled by the feelings and emotions. You, when you end here, you get 20 missed calls. But when you call back, nothing important. Not even someone who was, I had a patient that needed attention. No, just busy, petty things. But this one is not going to work. Do not know what it means to be a servant of. We want people who can self-control themselves, are patient, patient. And even you can know that among some people here, some people are impatient. You get 10 missed calls, but the thing that they wanted you to help them it is something that is very pretty. We need to be much. If you call someone one and second, it doesn't speak. There's no need for you to continue after every one minute. Every one minute. Because if that person understands that I need to call back, if someone is upright, you know that he will call back. But some people, after one minute, call. One minute, so if you miss such a man or such a woman, you know that that is a dangerous one to be with. That patient, that patient, because it's going to be carried in your mouth. Those are people who want what they want at that time, and they don't want any other excuse. Are we together? Are you going to suffer in your marriage? When you say no, they say, no, 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 just right now. That is someone who's going to bully you. Patience, patience, very important. What should be our object for entering into courtship? I repeat, do not enter into a marriage engagement unless there are good and sufficient reasons for this step. Unless the work of God can be better advanced thereby. So why do we enter into courtship and marriage? According to that quote, why? To advance what? The work of God. That is the reason why the end time marriages are contracted. We only need missionary marriages. Christian young people who sense the shortness of time, the nearness of the end, and who are devoted to the service of Christ, their first desire will be not to get married. Are you getting that? Your first desire is not to get married. But to do what? Get the work done. Which work is Done first, the work of God first. Not I'm hurrying so that I can make money. No, no, no. So that the work of God get done. And so the dedicated young person whose heart is filled with one thing to please this Lord, if God leads him to see that getting married will increase his usefulness for God, fine, he will get married. But until then, what is his one heart desire? to get the work of God done. I want to get married so that the work of God be done. I'm a physician and a physician should be a married man. That is God's providential working to show me that 
it is God's will that I should be married. Because you will be meeting male, uh, female patients that need very, uh, very, very sensitive treatment. Your wife will help you. Are we together? To get the work of God done. Or I'm counseling people and most of the clients are just female patients. If my wife is there and we are counseling, we are counseling together and maybe doing the diagnosis together, it will really bring a lot of uh, a lot of pureness and glory in the work of God. No loophole is given for evil uh, appearances. Are we together? Yeah. If he's a minister and God sees it is someone to help in the ministry, God will provide. It is to provide, it is to advance the work of God. Not to pass time, to enjoy time. And we hear the marriage is very good. Someone is hurrying into marriage without knowing the expectation. If it is the work of the work get done, well and good. Not for your own pleasing. In too many cases, love sick sentimentalism takes the place. The aim and guides to certain view. Love seeks sentimentalism is that he wants every time this person you chat with this person. They all day just chatting. That is a guilish, boyish kind of relationship. Every, every day. Have you ever met such people? Well, after one hour, text. You want to text for 30 minutes. Even you forget, I you forget what he was doing. Because he's doing what? Chatting. That is carried with the feeling. You don't want love sick sentimentalism. I can't sleep without you. Such statements. We need to guard our feelings. Will you conclude that feelings in the proper in the proper plan are to guide or to follow, they are to follow while you may love, do not love blindly. And then look first. True love is a plan that needs culture. Let the woman who desire peaceful, happy union hold, escape future misery and sorrow in choir before she yields her affections. And how do you know that? How he relates with his siblings. How he relates with his mother. The spirit of prophecy did, uh, point this very clearly. Does he love a mother? Do you know why that is important? Because the way he behaves with the mother is the way he's going to behave with, with you. I had a minister saying that, oh, my mother cannot, I cannot condone that. I will shut him immediately when she speaks that about you. Know that that is how you are going to be shut. How does she carry herself or himself? How does she speak to the father and the mother? Does she see the mother to be just a kid? Those are things we need to look at. How does she handle the mother? Does she care for the mother? If you see she cares for the mother, you know that she's going to care for her. Are we together? The same applies to the lady. How she handles the father and the mother. How she handles or he handles the, 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 the young sibling. Does she or she rules them dictate, uh, in a dictator way, dictatorship way? You want to look at this thing before you give in. Because we are living in a society where men have not learned the principle of God and they want to be very dictatorial and do not learn how to submit. You know, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22, that submitting one to another, submission is between the husband and the what? Wife. And then in a special way, the wife is to submit to the husband. But submission is both ways. Not one submitting and is on her head being stamped on. And one right. No, no. Both ways. And how the submission is 
in the line of the will of God, not just submitting to anything that is not the will and the plan of God. Are we together? Yes. Not saying yes to everything. It is weighing them in the land, in the plan of God, in the word of God. Is it right at this time? That's why patience and self-control, very important, and love, very important what it is that we should practice at home. How many minutes remaining? They are all. They are all. Mm. Thank you. Are you matched or matters? That is something I need to ask myself. This companion that I think that I have, are we matters or we are matched? Are we just coming together because we want to get married, or we are much so that the cause of God can find glory. Many people are meeting, but not much. Just, just, yes? Just something. What? What is the difference? Meeting is just coming together. Uh, being united. Yeah, being united together, like husband and wife. Yeah. Much is a little bit higher, depending on, because the prior classes or lessons was about pleasing God, are we together? And doing the work of God. And also in compatibility. Are we compatible? Are we compatible? Is our emotion, is our uh, temperament harmonizing? Do you know temperaments? How we carry is this person getting soon hungry? Very fast, you are also soon hungry. Are we all geared towards glorifying God? All our ambitions and passions and our thoughts are almost together. We are matched towards doing the work of God. Method is just casually. I see two people married here, so a woman and a man can be mated together. They can just come together. For the case, for the for the reason of, of living, but much do you fit together? As Adam and Eve, Eve was an helpmate. Is she a helpmate? So a companion, someone who fills a gap that you yourself could not fill. Are we together in the line of work of God? That is what I'm speaking about. Is she feeling a position that you were not able to do in the work of God? I am a medical missionary. For an example, I can get a lady who we're just meeting. We're just marrying because people are married, so we're just united. We just live together. But our four goals, ambitions, and purposes are not one. Another way I can marry because I see I have a lot of duties. To reach out to the sea, both men and female, but mostly I, I meet female patients. But I want someone who can feel that part that I cannot do. We are marching together for the goal that or for the cause that God has given us. Are we together? Have you understood? Yeah. So we are not just meted like the people do outside here. We are marched in order to. Make the cause of God continue. I want to pray and then end. And maybe someone has a question. Let's pray. Our most gracious Father, watch in heaven. We thank you for giving us this time and opportunity to learn about these things. These are principles that we need to follow and enact in our, in our lives that, Lord, we may glorify you. We pray that you may help us, both married and unmarried, that we may make decisions that are going to please you. Let your blessings be upon us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.